who's sleeping on my bed. My beautiful Levine. She likes sleeping in the feathers. <laughs> my bedroom. I love my bedroom. It is so comfy. These are the um, beads that I make getting off track a bit but yeah I like making beads too and these are I specialize in lariats which are a long string about 40 inches long a meter some maybe a meter 20 and I put all my favorite beautiful glass beads and sometimes I recycle um, necklaces or bracelets you know that have these beautiful little that's that's a police box from doctor who it's a tardis and that's on my lariat and these beautiful just beautiful beads that's another thing i do i love beadwork especially with crystals and um stones that come from volcanoes can you believe it they're volcanic stones. Yeah, they're the ones that I wear most to wear my own. This is the quilt cupboard. It's a beautiful Chinese cupboard that I got. Oh, it must be 25 years ago. And I keep my best quilts in it. Up above, some cute little things. I bought the little clock. When I was in Florida one year, I love tins. So, yeah, click tins. And this, this cupboard I've had with me since I was 18. I bought it in a second-hand shop for, oh, must have been $25, I think. Such a lot of money back then. And I've kept it because you know, it's been a long, you know, long journey. But the mirrors always make me look good. It's one of those mirrors, you know, where you look in it, you look thin and gorgeous. So what more can you want? So, yeah, I love it. And that's it. So one of the handles broke years and years ago. Somebody painted it blue. John took back the blue. It's got big drawers in the bottom. Yeah, and I have a beautiful Chinese table that my friend Louise gave me. And it's got carved feet. And it folds up. So it is a table, it's a tray, and it just folds up. And a beautiful... Um, room divider one of my best friends Naomi gave that to me she left it to me in her will it's just so gorgeous it reminds me of her every every time I look at it such beautiful wood gorgeous artwork by my niece Vanessa Vanessa Reynolds, she's an artist. This is a beautiful acrylic. I love it. And it's just perfect colours for this room. And that is my garden. Can you believe it? But these orchids, which are epivites, love growing in an easily facing window with um, a matchstick blind behind it, like an Indian type wooden blind, just enough um, diffusion of light and heat to make them love it. And they're all got new flower shoots. They're beautiful. This one broke off, so I put it in some um, sphagnum and some of those little. Um, growing beads they have for indoor plants and my <laughs> these are succulents 
um, ones that I broke off somewhere and someone I think they're on, on gardens you know that grow on the verge this little cactus in this same little car I've had for I got it when my youngest son was 34 was well, he's 34 now and I bought it when he was four years old so I've had it in I've had it in the same pot for 30 years. Can you believe it? I think I've bonsai it and it flowers every so often, not every year, but it flowered on my birthday this year, last year, uh, 2021. It flowered on my birthday. I can't believe it. It must love me. And the other little car, which is exactly the same, my grandchildren painted it. Looks like little broom. <laughs> it had a cactus in it too from the same uh, shop I bought them at Kmart for two dollars ninety nine, I think each. And that one is no longer with us, but the little cactus still is. Yeah, I also love um, sun catchers. I take a photo of the morning. Every morning, the morning sunrise except Shabbat. I have a record. This little chair. My grandmother bought it for me. It's got a cushion in it for Levine. But I've had this little chair since I was four years old. So it is getting warm. Because I will be 70 soon. Such love. Okay. So that's my bedroom. I have two works in progress. Hmm. This is my big one and I'm hoping that it will be a masterpiece. It's taking... Let's say a good long time I've been procrastinating. And it's made out of fine wool. And it's a yell cardigan. This is the second time I've had a go at it. So I I purchased beautiful wool from where I was supposed to. <laughs> Jemisons and Smiths. But I got the wrong colour somehow. So I've had to order some um, Rowan, and John blew up the um, up the graphs for me, so it would make it much easier. And I love these project bags that you can see through them. I think I got it at Hobby with a an order once, and I keep my well, I'm keeping my project in it. This is the um, actual spindrift that I got. And I had another one, and it was so so um, light, light brown, that I had no colour definition between uh, the next section of it, and this is where I'm up to. And so I've had to put on hold for just... Well, that's the back. <laughs> this is the front. So I've had to put on hold until I can... Um, To me other yarn comes it's so beautiful and I'm really pleased with how it's working out I think the colors are nice they're my earthy colors and yeah we'll see how that goes hopefully well and I'll have a beautiful beautiful cardigan You may recognize this yarn, this beautiful yarn. This is like the second or third time it's been to the frog pond. I've decided it's so beautiful I have to use it. And so I've started a new vest. I'll put it down here so we can see it. And I realized <laughs> that... 
the pattern is the reverse of purl stitch so so that my purl stitches stand out on the front not the back and this is a pattern that I've chosen it's an old um, English type pattern which suits me more it's beautiful the vest she is and that's the shape how basic but how beautiful and then I have to turn to page 19 to get the pattern and the pattern um, ends up like uh, wheat which I'm really excited to do and it's in this old um, pattern book that's I think more suited to my shape anyway it's an English pattern book so vintage <laughs> Lovely vest. It's a vest book. My vest. A cardigan vest. A tabard. But yeah, that's lovely too. And in thick wool, I'm thinking thick is how I should be going. Just uh, to use up some of my beautiful yarn, I just put my hand in front of the but yeah, going out soon. It's a lovely day. It's Sunday and I thought I'd do some sewing today. Well, cutting out some fabric and doing the renovations, modifications to my fen dresses. And this is my skirt that I really like. It's um an old skirt now, but the pattern is perfect for stretch fabric for this um, knitted soft jersey fabric and I use it quite often it's a pencil skirt quite flattering and um, very easy to make so it's just um, the length and I can get um, a skirt out of uh, one meter of 45 centimeter wide fabric and I really like spoon flower fabric. And this is the fabric that I've got. And I've had this fabric a fair while from my favourite um, designer at Spoon Flower. And I just love the colours in it. And it has beautiful detail. I'll put the uh, designer's name on the screen when I edit. So that is one dress. And it's this beautiful... Uh, stretch fabric that's 40 140 uh, centimeter 145 centimeters wide and I bought um, two meters and it's screen printed so that was two lots of screen printing in one and she will do it as a continuous print but isn't it just beautiful now the second one is this beautiful blue and it has some somewhat scary things in it but they are so beautiful look at this beautiful moth and I just love her designs Katerina <laughs> spiders my granddaughter said she'll have the off cut she's five and she'll have a skirt as long as the spiders and snakes, there's a snake, are, are visible. <laughs> so I'll see what's left. But isn't that the most beautiful fabric? And I think big flowers on a, a dress or a skirt is so lovely. It um, It suits my... Because I'm, it suits my um, body type. Because I'm tall, not thin by any means, <laughs> but you know, it just the large, larger design is really beautiful. I think. 
the flowers are so lovely and the blue is lovely and look at the strawberries I think they're strawberries and some grapes or no not grapes some um, mulberries so yeah I'm hoping to do that today gonna get the sewing machine out in a minute and uh, hopefully have some fun <laughs> I've now laid my fabric out. I'm making a skirt out of this piece. And there is enough, because it's a one-way design, there is enough for two lengths in it. So I have folded it in half, and I will get um, the two halves of the skirt on the length-wise. Because it's also a jersey knit, <clears throat> the knitting... Um, is also going in a direction. I want it straight up and down for the stretch. So, yeah, I also am hoping I don't end up with a big tarantula on my bottom. <laughs> oh, let's see how this one goes. I've laid my template skirt on top. I have some fabric on the edge. For seam allowance and everything and I've sort of centered the spider as much as I can and this skirt is a very handy one because and very easy to wear all it has is an elastic in the top and a nice little hem at the bottom so next step this is my finished skirt all the bags on it in the hallway. This is where I live. Beautiful art deco built in. And this is my skirt. So it's very simple. Do you see the big spiders? And moths. <laughs> and a snake. But if you're not looking, it's just a pretty skirt. Just elastic at the top, hem at the bottom, and that's it. Can't wait to wear it. Oh, this is the modifications I'm doing to my dresses, my fen dresses. I, I've taken the extra fabric off. The armholes and I made the shoulder seam five and a half inches and I cut it with the rotary cutter so I've got a square line and I'm going to sew around the outside of the dress the right side with the binding quarter of an inch in cotton binding cotton fabric um, I've got four armholes to do so I'll whiz around those and then I'll sew by hand the bias turned over and that's a modification I've got to do with my dress. This fabric by the way, is um, beautiful um, K Facet Collective, and it's uh, Brandon Mobley Octopus. And I just, I've been, you know, I love this fabric since it first came out. And then I had a chance to buy uh, three meters of it, and I decided to make a dress because I just wanted to wear it. It is so perfect, and it's black, my favorite colors, with a bit of other colors, and I wear it with a bolero top. That's why I'm modifying the sleeves and armholes. So I've come to the point where I'm going to join the binding and I'm going to just trim a bit off. So I started and 
add my piece in. I don't want it to be tight on the underneath. Got a point. Should I have points under my arms? But yes, I have points. That's one arm, one arm hold on. And I'll um, turn it and just sew it by hand in. It'll be really, really wearable for me then and hopefully Winter, I won't mind. I'll wear something under it. My fab snag tights or something. <laughs> Howie. I've finished doing the modifications on my two dresses. I still have a few to go, but this is the two that I wanted to do today. And this is what I did. I made the, um, the shoulder five and a half inches. It did come out. A couple of inches more and it sort of stuck out under my you know it, it didn't stick out it just was extra fabric in my bolero type top that I wear over the top and so I thought I should just you know do the modification and make myself happy <laughs> so today was the day and I bought the um, binding and this is it and so, yeah, I double stitched it, so the binding on. I did it all by machine because time is short, isn't it? <laughs> so, yeah, that's that one. And the black one I did also. And you can't see it. But, yes, it's exactly five and a half inches too. And this one has um, tartan binding around the neck. It did have part, um, tartan binding on the sleeves too, but obviously they're gone. And so, yeah really happy with them and this is how how they look now nice dresses can't wait to wear them today while I've got my sewing machine out I'm sewing up my um, swap locks I'm in a swap, it's called the Aussie, the Aussie Crafty Swap. It's for Australia, Australian swappers only because of international postage and the price it costs probably. But it's just, so yes, uh, and this is called the something. Oh. I don't know what. While I've got the machine out, I'm going to make up my economy block swap. It's a really easy block, and the group that I'm in, we are swapping these blocks. It's an Australian swap group and Aussie crafty swappers, and um, I've got two people to send to this month. So I am making red, white, and blue for one, and blush, blush pink, and navy for the other. I've cut out all my three inch squares, my other three inch squares, and my four inch squares, and all the squares get cut into triangles. I'm using my nifty little ruler and my trusty, trusty fiscus. Um, no, not fiscus, olo. I love it. My rotary cutter, yes. And yeah, I, I need to get these done today. So I'm doing um, a production line. So I'm just sewing all my tops and bottoms on this round turning them, sewing the other two triangles on the other sides and then I'll get to the big triangles 
and then I'll iron it and post them off tomorrow. ASAP. <laughs> I need to get on with it. So much. Just a short note, this is the second stage, but with the production line, you string print, string stitch everything together so that it comes out like a production line. So fast and so easy. I do it with everything, even my hexagons, my English paper piecing pieces. Everything is chain stitched. So good. Anyway, I'm up to the second second part. Hopefully, <laughs> we'll chug along. This is the next step. I have sewn the next lot of triangles to the squares in a chain. As I have a lovely chain of blocks. Well, this is halfway done. All I have to do is iron them and attach the last four outer triangles and they'll be done. They go really fast once I get into it. You know, it's just procrastination but once I get going you know it's fun and something that I really want to do so off to the ironing board I'm up to the last square put my machine away now I just have to trim these up to five five and a half inch And they'll be ready to go. So happy. Make sure that the points are perfect. Of course, it's a swab. These are called economy blocks. And you can find... You can find a tutorial for it. Just Google. <laughs> That's what I do. I just Google. <laughs> just Google economy blocks. And hopefully finished. Look at this fab little pile. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> so good to finish a project. Oh, that's lovely. Do you want to say a bit about it? Nope. Thousand piece puzzle, a nice Ravensburg puzzle. Ingrid Bergman, my favourite movie of all time. Well, one of them. John is a puzzler. This is the latest one he's done. It is so beautiful but it's a really long one with 990 pieces how weird is that five dollars a five dollar puzzle brand new at the post office
gave him something to do for a couple of hours. And yeah, got this puzzle at the post office for five dollars to do with my five year old daughter granddaughter Audi when she comes over. Looks like fun. Yep. Give you both something to do. For a little while. Is there another edge? Edge. This year I thought we would plant some of those little bulbs at the shed. John has got a um, small plot of ground and a big shed and I thought in the mountains where it snows and I thought we would buy some bulbs this year. We live in Australia and he bought them from the AussieGardener.com in Sydney. They are beautiful. So he's going to plant them next time he goes up. And in here... Is a hundred of these perfect little bulbs a big paper bag full of a hundred bulbs Wow I can't wait to see them next year when they come up also he bought this well I bought it for him actually it's a bulb planter look a thing especially for planting bulbs I would be planting it with my left hand if I'm left-handed you put it in the soil you push this it pulls the soil out and then you let go and it puts the soil back in what a nifty idea wow I'm going to get the grandkids to do it I can bend over. This is Coogee Beach.
went out swimming. So beautiful, it's the 21st of April, 2022. Beautiful autumn day. People are out swimming. Beautiful waves. Tides coming in. And there's a rocky island out there in the ocean.
swimming down in the washing machine. <laughs> Look at the waves going up the stairs over there. I'm making an English paper pieced flowers. It's a one inch hexagon. Um, I've connected the six outside hexagons together first. And this is the back. You can see I've connected them all together using a tiny whip stitch. And then I connect them all to the center. And I have a trusty little peg that I just put on the corner just to start off with. I usually get 20 or 22 tiny stitches to an inch. Keeps it all together. I keep the papers in until I've connected the... the um, hold six petals, the outside petals, to other petals before I take the papers out. And I also iron it before I take the papers out. This particular one, take the peg out, this particular one is for our friend in England. And I hope, Anne, you will make more <laughs> English paper piece flowers and make a nice little quilt or something very exciting. I'm sending you some equipment paper pieces. So John? What's today like? Nice. Nice. Sounds nice. <laughs> That's us signing off for this week. Bye folks.
That's my end then. You <laughs> weren't working at the same time as me. I know. I might do the welcome one. I need to know which way to look so that I'm looking at the camera and not... So, do I look this way or do I look that way? Well, just hold it up and see where you're in the centre. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work like that. I need to know where to look. You have to look to the side, I think. Yeah, you don't want me in it. I think I have to look that way. Sorry? I think I have to look that way. So that's it for me for this week. Hope to see you next week. Thanks for joining me. Bye.